Hey guys, are you all disappointed like I am about the whole subframe selector script that has now gone away with PixInsight? Well, I am a bit heartbroken because I knew how to use that very well. And they replaced it and decided to get rid of the one that we are used to and put it in the process section as another subframe selector. The only issue is, instead of having one menu that you filled out that was fairly straightforward, you now have three menus to fill out and you kind of have to figure out the order of inputting the information. Well, I'm going to break through all that confusion for you this week and I'm going to show you how to use the new subframe selector. Alright, now let's talk about the new subframe selector tool that PixInsight has added to their process menu and removed it from the script section. And it does look a bit different than what we are accustomed to. So to get it, let's go under process and image inspection and subframe selector. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a good reset. Now you've got this section here and this is where you are going to add all of your files to. Okay, so let's add our files and I'm going to go grab a batch here. Alright, I've got 10 images of the Lagoon Nebula that I took a while back. I took them with the Altair Astro 80mm Star Wave scope paired with a ZWO 183 color cool camera. Okay, now that I have the images loaded in here, I need to fill out the subframe scale. Now, many of you guys have been asking, where do I find out my image scale? Well, the easy way is to go to the internet and let Google help you. And there is a website that is called astronomy.tools. Okay, you find this website and it's called the field of view calculator. Go under image mode and let's choose our telescope and I'm gonna find the Altair let's just type it in Altair and it's the light wave star wave let's grab this one they've got the same specs close enough okay here's my telescope focal length of 500 millimeters aperture 80 millimeters and I'm gonna put my camera on here which is going to be the ZWO183. Now, if your camera specs or telescope specs are not in this pull down menu, all you need to do is type in the data manually. All right, here's a 183, and just fill out what your resolution is. Now, this looks about right here, and I was not using, or was I? No, I was using a reducer this night, so add in a 0.8x reducer. Let's go ahead and just grab an image so we can just visualize if this was right. Since I'm on the lagoon, I'm going to show the lagoon and do add to view. There you go. And that looks about what I was taking images at. But this is where you wanted to know where is your image scale. It is also known as your resolution. And your image scale is 1.24 inch pixels. So go ahead and write down 1.24. All right, let's go back over to PixInsight. We'll come here and your subframe scale, change this to 1.24, okay? Now you can go as far as doing your bits count that you were using. I was on a 16-bit camera. I usually leave this camera gain as one um, everything else here I leave basically as the default all right all these other sections here the star detector parameters I leave it at default region of interest I leave it at default format hints default and output files this is where you want your files to go when you are done so let's go to my directory again and I'm gonna create a approved directory for them and select that folder okay and all of my images are going to keep the same name 
with a postfix or suffix of an underscore a and my keyword I want to have is ss weight. Now you come down here to this next window and this is where all of the confusion seems to happen. You remember back when we used the script tool we had a little formula that we typed in about our full weight half measure wanting it to be less than 6 and our eccentricity wanting to be less than 0.6 or 0.5 well that is where you put that equation and I actually cheated I have a copy of that equation over here in my OneNote so all I have to do is open my OneNote each time do a control C click over here do a control V and there's my equation so I don't have to type it anymore and the weighting you want it to be S N R W E I G H T okay and you see these little arrows over here I didn't think much about them before but you actually want to click them once each time and this has this process it through the um, the calculation file so up here I'm going to measure but you could also output and do star detection preview but first step is to measure okay and let's run it all right now that it has measured everything it pops up with this other window here and apparently the batch that I chose was a very a very poor batch to even show for this video because they are all over the place and in fact none of them were accepted in my tolerance now let's see why because there must have been a bright star in that mix of the image here so they're all pretty high in level but my eccentricity is a really good value so I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna change this to 7 because this is probably caused by just one star and I'm gonna go ahead and run it again let's send it through hit and enter and you can see it took all of my images except for one and that one was because my full weight half measure star is over the number seven well this is acceptable to me so now that you have it measured we need to output it into our directory so we can use it in the next phase of our processing so come over here to this window and hit the arrow down and choose output subframes double check you're sending it to the directory that you want it to go in all the ones that are checked will be copied over to this folder and the one that is X'd out has now been rejected for being outside of our tolerance that we want to use and we run this again all right now that it's run let's go check our directory and make sure that it is over there all right it should have gone to this approved folder and let's double check there it is that's our approved image so the next step for you right now would be to go ahead and registi register these images and continue with your processing I hope this little tutorial helped you on how to use the new subframe selector I appreciate your time for watching this video if you like this type of videos please consider subscribing hit the alert bell so you know when I upload new astro related videos also don't forget to share this with all of your astro friends we're going to close in on 5,000 subscribers really soon. And when I hit 5,000, I've got something very special for you. So stay tuned in future videos to get details on that. I am Amy Astro. I'm wishing you guys some great health, clear skies, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, y'all.